Hey there, I'm Raleen. Before I dive into my story, take a second to hit that like button and subscribe. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming. So I'm 40 and I teach high school English. It's not just a job for me, it's my passion. I love seeing those light bulb moments when a student finally gets Shakespeare or nails a tricky essay. But lately things at home have been complicated. I've been married to Mark for seven years. He's this hotshot real estate agent, always closing big deals. We bought this gorgeous house five years ago. Hardwood floors, bay windows, the works. It felt like we were living the dream, you know? Then there's Jake, Mark's brother. He's been crashing on our couch for weeks now. Lost another job, got evicted. Same old story. I tried to help at first, even updated his resume. Jake, I heard the hardware store is hiring. Want me to put in a good word? He just shrugged. Nah, it's cool. Something better will come along. Meanwhile, he's always hitting Mark up for cash. I overheard them arguing the other night. Come on, bro. Just a couple hundred to tide me over. Jake, this is getting out of hand. You said that last time. It's causing tension, and Mark gets defensive when I bring it up. He's family, Raleen. What am I supposed to do? My best friend Olivia, who teaches math down the hall, isn't buying Jake's act. Over coffee in the teacher's lounge, she said, Girl, that freeloader is taking advantage of you both. I sighed. I know, but Mark won't hear it. Despite the drama at home, I throw myself into my work. We're planning this big fundraiser for new library books. I was shocked when Mark offered to match all donations. Babe, that's incredible, I said, hugging him tight. He grinned. Anything for my star teacher. It was moments like that that made me feel like everything was okay. But then there are times, like when I wanted to take that creative writing workshop last summer. I don't know, Raleen. It's pretty expensive. Maybe next year? But he never bats an eye at Jake's loans. It's frustrating, but I tell myself he's just being generous. Still, I can't shake this nagging feeling. Like when I check our bank statements and see weird transactions. When I ask Mark about them, he gets all defensive. What, you don't trust me now? I thought we were a team. I back off, feeling guilty for doubting him. But Olivia's words keep echoing in my head. Keep your eyes open, Raleen. Something's not adding up. I want to believe everything's fine. That Mark's just being a good brother. That our marriage is solid. But as I grade papers late into the night, with Jake snoring on the couch and Mark still at work, I can't help but wonder, what am I missing? Jake's temporary stay stretched into weeks, then months. His stuff was everywhere. Dirty laundry, empty beer cans, you name it. I tried to stay positive, but my patience was wearing thin. One morning, I stumbled over his gym bag in the hallway. Jake, could you please keep your things in your room? He barely looked up from his phone. Oh, sorry, I'll move it later. Later never came. When I brought it up to Mark, he just shrugged it off. Cut him some slack, Raleen. He's going through a rough patch. But Jake wasn't even trying to find work. I'd leave job listings on the coffee table and they'd end up as coasters for his beer. One night I overheard them arguing in the kitchen. Mark, I need more cash. My buddy's got this investment opportunity. Are you kidding me? I've already given you thousands. Come on, bro. You're rolling in it. What's a few more grand? I held my breath, hoping Mark would stand his ground. But then I heard him sigh. Fine. But this is the last time, Jake. I mean it. The next day at school, I confided in Olivia. I don't know what to do. It's like Mark's a different person around Jake. Olivia's face grew serious. Raleen, honey, I hate to say this, but Mark's behavior is setting off all kinds of red flags. The defensiveness, the secrecy. Something's not right. I wanted to argue, but deep down, I knew she had a point. That night, I decided to check our joint account. What I saw made my stomach drop. Thousands of dollars in unexplained withdrawals. When Mark got home, I confronted him. What's going on with our account? Where's all this money going? His face darkened. You're spying on me now? I thought you trusted me. I do, but... But what? I work hard for our money. If I want to help my brother out, that's my business. I felt like I was going crazy. Was I overreacting? 
Mark made me feel like I was the problem for even asking. At school, I tried to focus on my work, but I was slipping. Nathan, a new teacher I was mentoring, noticed. Raleen, are you okay? You seem... distracted lately? I forced a smile. Just a bit stressed. Nothing to worry about. But there was plenty to worry about. Mark was coming home later and later, always with some excuse about a big deal or a difficult client. I wanted to believe him, but the doubt was eating away at me. Things came to a head at a dinner party we hosted for my colleagues. Jake, despite my pleas to Mark to ask him to stay out for the night, was there in all his glory. As I was serving dessert, Jake piped up, Hey, Raleen, where's that fancy wine Mark bought last week? The really expensive stuff? I froze. I didn't know anything about expensive wine. Mark jumped in, laughing awkwardly. Oh, Jake's just joking around, always the prankster, right, bro? But I saw the looks my colleagues exchanged. I felt humiliated. Later, after everyone had left, I confronted Mark. What was Jake talking about? What wine? Mark's eyes hardened. For God's sake, Raleen, it was just a misunderstanding. Why are you always looking for problems? I went to bed that night feeling more alone than ever. The man I married, the life we'd built, it all felt like it was slipping away. And I had no idea how to stop it. As I lay there, listening to Jake's laughter floating up from the living room, I couldn't help but wonder, how did we get here? And more importantly, where do we go from here? I came home early that day, a migraine pounding behind my eyes. As I pulled into the driveway, loud music assaulted my ears. The front door was wide open, strangers stumbling in and out. I stormed inside, shocked at the scene. Our house was trashed. Beer cans littered every surface and the air reeked of smoke. In the midst of it all was Jake, drunk and laughing. Hey sis, join the party! I was too stunned to speak. Then I saw it, my grandmother's antique vase shattered on the floor. Red-hot anger surged through me. Everyone out! Now! I screamed. As the crowd dispersed, I confronted Jake. What the hell were you thinking? He just shrugged, swaying slightly. Lighten up, it's just stuff. I called Mark, my voice shaking. You need to come home, now. When Mark arrived, I expected him to be as furious as I was. Instead, he looked annoyed at me. Raleen, why are you making such a big deal? It's just a party. I couldn't believe my ears. Just a party. Look at this place, my grandmother's vase. Oh, for God's sake, it's just a vase. The argument escalated quickly. I was in tears, gesturing at the destruction around us. Mark kept defending Jake, minimizing the damage. Then he dropped the bomb. You know what? This house is too big for us anyway. I'm giving it to Jake. I thought I'd misheard. What? You heard me. Jake needs a fresh start. We can find somewhere else. The room spun. You can't be serious. This is our home. Mark's face hardened. Actually, it's my home. I bought it. And I say Jake stays. You can leave. In that moment, my world shattered like that vase. I don't remember much after that. Somehow, I ended up at Olivia's place, sobbing on her couch. Nathan showed up, too, bringing coffee and a shoulder to cry on. This isn't right, Olivia fumed. He can't just kick you out. Nathan nodded. There has to be something we can do. Their support gave me strength. As the shock wore off, determination set in. I needed answers. I have to figure out what's really going on, I said. This isn't just about the house. Something's not right with Mark's finances. Olivia squeezed my hand. Whatever you need, we're here. That's when I remembered Sarah. She'd been my student years ago, now a detective. I'd kept in touch, even attended her academy graduation. With shaking hands, I dialed her number. Sarah, it's Raleen. I... I need your help. We met at a quiet cafe. I poured out the whole story. The missing money... Mark's secretive behavior, the house. Sarah listened intently, her cop instincts clearly kicking in. This sounds like more than just family drama, Raleen. There could be some serious financial crimes going on here. Can you help me investigate? I asked, hope rising in my chest. Sarah hesitated. Officially, I can't, but... 
you were there for me when I was struggling in school. I wouldn't be where I am without you. So, yeah, off the record, I'll do what I can. For the first time in weeks, I felt a glimmer of hope. Whatever Mark was hiding, whatever game he and Jake were playing, I was going to find out. And I wasn't going down without a fight. Sarah, Olivia, Nathan, and I huddled around my kitchen table, surrounded by papers and laptops. It felt like we were in some kind of spy movie. Okay, first things first, Sarah said, all business. We need to establish a paper trail. Bank statements, credit card bills, anything financial. We divided tasks. I dug through old files while Olivia scoured online records. Nathan, tech-savvy as always, worked on accessing Mark's email. Remember, Sarah warned, we're just gathering information. Don't do anything illegal. Days turned into weeks. Slowly, a disturbing picture emerged. Mark's successful real estate business was a house of cards. He'd been falsifying documents, inflating property values, and pocketing the difference. Look at this, Olivia gasped one night, pointing at her screen. He's been funneling money through offshore accounts. But the real shock came when we uncovered Mark's gambling addiction. Thousands lost at underground poker games, desperate loans from shady characters. This explains the mood swings, I whispered, feeling sick. Jake wasn't innocent either. He'd been acting as a front for Mark's shadier deals, using his unemployed loser persona as a cover. As the evidence mounted, Sarah helped me compile everything into a meticulous file. We need to turn this over to the authorities, she said grimly. With shaking hands, I submitted an anonymous tip to the FBI's Financial Crimes Unit. Sarah assured me they'd take it seriously. Meanwhile, I quietly met with a divorce lawyer, securing what assets I could. It felt surreal, dismantling the life we'd built. Then, on a rainy Tuesday, it all came crashing down. I was grading papers when my phone exploded with notifications. Mark and Jake had been arrested in the middle of a major scam, caught red-handed trying to defraud investors. I sat there numb as the news reports rolled in. Part of me felt vindicated, but mostly I just felt... tired. And sad for what could have been. The next few months were a whirlwind. I threw myself into my work, finding solace in my students and colleagues. To my surprise, I was offered the position of department head. You've shown incredible resilience and leadership, my principal said. We need someone like you. With my new salary and the money I'd managed to save, I found a small but beautiful house. As I unpacked boxes, Olivia and Nathan by my side, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. I later heard that Mark lost his real estate license and was facing serious jail time. Jake, too, was headed for a stint behind bars. Looking around at my cozy living room, at the photos of smiling students on the mantel, I realized something important. The house Mark and I had shared was just a building. This, this was a home, my home, and no one could take that away from me. For the first time in a long time, I felt truly at peace. Whatever came next, I knew I could handle it. After all, I'd already survived the worst. And I'd come out stronger on the other side. The story has ended. If you were Raleen, would you have confronted Mark earlier about his suspicious behavior? Or was she right to gather evidence first? How far should one go to protect family before drawing the line? Share your thoughts in the comments. If this story resonated with you, please like and subscribe for more thought-provoking content. Your support helps us create stories that challenge perspectives and spark important conversations.